So we're at a point now where we have to, at the, at the quality of cars that we're buying, and I think we've, you know, and I say this in a humble way, at, at, at the place curated is, we've tried our best to just continue to evolve and buy the best of the best and buy better cars and, and evolve as we grow in the sense that we're pursuing, you know, bigger cars and we're pursuing, you know, only the best of the best quality. And that's also because we're a boutique dealership. So, we, you know, uh, it's, it's the same amount of effort of selling a, a 30,000 mile, you know, Murcielago with a big wing uh, as it is a, a perfect car. Um, and, and for me, I'm just so OCD and I really believe in the DNA of the company that we'll always be boutique because you have to have your hand and you have to have a small team to review the details of each car. I don't, I don't, you know, um, you know, managing a Countach service or managing a Countach when it comes in is a lot of work. So it's not like we could ever sell 500 cars a year. It's not going to happen. So we've evolved in the way we look for cars and, and the quality of cars we look for. And it's gotten down to the point now where, you know, I would say other dealers from around the world call us, other collectors call us when they hear of an incredible car. Uh, hey, John, I've got a thousand mile Countach. Are you interested? And even through YouTube, um, we have gotten a lot of people that have reached out to us. Um, recently, the original owner of the Mira SV time capsule car actually called us. Um, he, I'm sorry, he sent us an email and he wants to call us at some point. So, I mean, all these crazy people have reached out to us um, that, that I would say have helped us also get where we are today. And we're constantly digging. It's information, it's cold calling. It's all these things to find our inventory. When I first started, I used to look on things like Craigslist, and I used to look on things like all these, you know, Hemmings and all these things to potentially find a deal. And listen, the, the reality is it's just, it, it's very difficult um, to find anything there. I, for myself, have been looking for sort of a daily driver car. Um, I have to admit it sounds uh, a little, um, I'm sort of embarrassed to even say this, but I'm, I'm looking for an automatic um, because I, I, my commute is probably gonna be, uh, you know, 20, 30 minutes. Um, I plan on moving a little further south. So I've been looking for some sort of a, a maybe a 996 turbo automatic or an E55, uh, a, w, uh, a 99 to 2001 E55, super cool car. And, and a lot of car for the money. It's something I could drive, it's not gonna lose its value, and, and it's affordable, I could afford it. So I've been looking on things like F Facebook Marketplace and all these different sites, not for necessarily curated inventory, but for something for me that could be anywhere between 17,000 or 40,000. Um, as I was looking uh, one night, um, I stumbled upon an ad that was, um, it was like a collage of photos. Um, so, so that sort of like, it didn't look like real photos. And it was an ad for a 1999 355 GTS, one owner car with 6,000 miles. Now, if you're not a 355 expert, I would say that most of the 355s on the market today or cars that you see are very high miles. Um, and majority of the cars are F1 transmission, especially in the US. So um, when you're, talking about a 355 or if you're a 355 connoisseur you know that okay a, a gtb or a gts are, are very rare to find in the u.s a manual gtb or gts is impossible to find and now a low mileage 6,000 mile one owner and oh wait it's the last year of production gts is basically a 355 unicorn so I see this ad and, and, and the price was, um, it was actually not a bad asking price. And I said, huh, I should try to reach out. So send Facebook message and I get a, a, a sort of a cryptic message back. Um, you could tell this probably, English was not the first language of this person, but they were pleasant. And they said that I should call their sister. I was like, okay. Um, and, and they mentioned that she owns the car. Now, listen, I'm, I'm talking with someone that doesn't speak great English on Facebook Marketplace. They're telling me to call their sister about a car. They're saying the car's in Miami, which is sort of random, but they're saying that I need to call their sister who's in another place of Florida. 
and all the red flags are just, I mean, if there's a scam, this has got to be a scam. But again, as I've said before, you have to sort of be optimistic and chase these things. So he gives me a number, and uh, that being said, it's an Illinois cell phone number, so it's not even a Florida cell phone number. So I called the number, and um, uh, I don't get anything back for a couple days. Nothing, I don't hear back. I sent a nice text message, nothing. So I, I figured, you know, it's probably a scam. I introduced myself as I have a boutique dealership in Miami, but we're also collectors. You know, we'd love to talk to you about your car. So I think it was like a Monday, uh, you know, two or three days later, I get a, a message back and I get a phone call back from this very sweet lady um, who you could see was sort of skeptical of what was going on with what is, at that time, I wasn't even sure if it was her car, but basically a car that she was in possession of. And she said, yes, I'm, I'm the owner of this 355. My cousin basically told me, you know, he'd help me sell the car. He put it on face, Facebook Marketplace. And um, if you're interested in the car, you know, I really gotta see who you are. And, you know, I'm not sure if I'm ready for you to come and see the car yet. So she was being a little evasive. And, and I have to admit that that sort of scared me a little bit, but I said, listen, here's my business address. You can come anytime I'm here to, you know, you can see our inventory, you know, we're legit. Um, I'm not gonna try to, you know, steal your car, or kidnap you or anything, um, which who knows in today's world on, on, on Facebook Marketplace. Um, so, you know, I basically, she disappears. Um, and again, a week goes by, I figure it's a scam. Uh, another week goes by and uh, guess what? Get a call from this sweet lady and she tells me she's coming down to see us at our dealership with her daughter. So we make plans, uh, she comes in and she's this really sweet, um, I would say she's probably in her 50s. Um, uh, did not look like a typical Ferrari owner by any means. Um, her and her daughter were probably some of the sweetest people I've met, very sincere. And she starts to tell me the story of her 355. And she tells me that she bought it brand new when she was pregnant um, with one of her daughters. And uh, basically she barely drove the car. And um, she told me this whole story. She bought it at Lake Forest uh, Sports Course, which is a famous Ferrari dealer out of the Midwest. And when she moved to Florida, she had always had the car service at Ferrari Fort Lauderdale. So I was like, wow. I mean, I, I don't think you get a better example of a 355 at this point. This is a one owner. It's low mileage. It's last year of production. I'm talking directly to the original owner that told me about the car. It's history. It's all serviced. And I basically just say, listen, I'm, I want the car. Um, she then tells me that she priced it wrong. She wants more money for the car. Um, and, and you know what? Honestly, at this point, I said, listen, I'm probably paying a little too, too much for the car. I'm probably paying retail. But I think the car's so special. I'm okay with that because that's what we buy. Now, I haven't seen the car. I do know she's a sweet lady. But listen, anything can happen. I've met some really nice people in my life that have also turned out to be scam artists. So you never know what you can encounter. I tell her, listen, I want the car. I'd love to see it. And again, she was hesitant. And I'm, it's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not just some, you know, I'm not a serial killer off of Facebook Marketplace, uh, but, but okay, I'm fine. So another week goes by and she tells me she's traveling. And again, I'm, again, a little skeptical. I haven't seen more photos of the car yet. Um, uh, I don't know how tech savvy she was. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm waiting for more information from her. And then one day I get a message. She goes, you know what? If you're free this Thursday, um, I'll meet you at this location. So she sends me an address and ironically, it's not her house. Um, it's a gas station uh, in about an hour north from Miami. And I say, okay, you know what? I'll make the drive, I'll go. So um, I jump in a car and I, I start driving north. And you know, I have to admit the last five, 10 minutes, I'm like, you know, am I being set up here? Like, you know, I haven't seen more photos of this car. She's being a little evasive. I mean, she's seen my showroom. Am I like, am I gonna get kidnapped? But anyways, I realized, okay, we're gonna be at a public place. Everything should be fine. I basically pull into the gas station and in the corner of my eye, okay. There it is, this stunning red 355 GTS. So um, I obviously, I pull up to the car and, and I get out of the car and the second I get out of the car. I realized that she hasn't been lying. Um, 
she she definitely represented the car perfectly well, which again, you know, everyone says their car is perfect. Everyone says, you know, oh, I'm the original owner. Um, this car looked like a new car. Um, I, I couldn't even have a poker face. I mean, I, you know, I, I told her immediately, I said, I don't think there is any, you know, I'm in business to negotiate. I'm in business to try to make a deal. I don't think I can negotiate with you because this is probably the best 355 I've seen in years. Um, original paint, uh, interior was immaculate. And then I realized, which I had not realized before because there were no photos of the car for me to really look at it, was that it was, because it was a 99, so 355s, the early cars, you didn't really see a lot of cars with interesting options. The last year of production, you could order things like shields, uh, which were a factory option. You could order red calipers from the factory. You could order red carpets from the factory. So it had red carpets, shields, calipers, and it had these great options. And the car was flawless. It smelt new. She had the cover. She had the books. She had the tools. So I think there was only one thing wrong with the car, um, and that was that the original radio, which was a Sony cassette that actually says Ferrari on it, was missing the little frame around the radio. Big deal. Um, and the tires were not, I, I mean, they were new tires, but they were probably not brand correct. I think they were Bridgestone tires. So definitely wanted to change the tires and do a few things. And I basically said, listen, I, I want the car. I can't negotiate with you. I'm happy to pay you what you want. Let's make a deal. She then says, well, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm too attached to the car. And I had to tell her at that moment and be transparent with her. Listen, I don't want to force you. I'm always here. I can write a check at any point. If I see a copy of the front and back of the title, you get funded in 24 to 48 hours. It's as simple as that. So now I think about two, three weeks went by. Um, I randomly nudge her and I said, listen, I don't want to pressure you. If you don't want to sell, it's fine, but I'm a buyer. Finally, one day she calls me. She goes, okay, I'm ready. Here's a copy of the title. We wrote up a purchase agreement and we bought the car. So we brought the car here and you know, it's funny, it's one of those things that it's not the most expensive car we've ever had by far. Um, I would say our average car is about 500,000 to 600,000. And, you know, we have cars that are two and $3 million. But the car presence of, of a 355, I mean, listen, let's face it, the 355 is probably one of the most iconic Ferraris ever made in this generation. Um, there's a, there's a, a following of those cars. There's almost like a cult following of those cars. And the second it got in the showroom, Everybody was asking about it. Everybody had questions. Everybody wanted to, you know, like look inside and touch it and, and blah, 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 blah. So it, it was definitely, it was probably one of the most surprising transactions we've ever had because what are the chances of finding a true Ferrari unicorn on Facebook Marketplace? Um, but again, it, it further illustrates why you can't give up. Um, you have to search and you have to dig. You have to be tenacious and you never know where you could stumble across something and you have to be somewhat optimistic. Um, if I had, you know, blown through, uh, you know, if, if I had, a, you know, seen red flags and just said, ah, no, this is a scam, probably wouldn't have ended up with the car. And um, it's definitely one of the stories that I'll never forget. Um, and we've got plenty more coming. So thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like and uh, much more vintage supercar content coming soon.